I love fashion. And I think that all these people that say that fashion's finished or fashion's frivolous, who doesn't like to dress up in a fantasy? And so I, I try to capture that every season. And, and you know, it's, it's what makes me happy. And I think if you can see, it makes the models happy too. I started off the collection thinking about how a woman built her wardrobe and iconic pieces like the sweatshirt and the pea coat and the motorcycle jacket, sort of wardrobe staples. And I tried to infuse these pieces with what I would like to think of as a downtown below 14th Street ease mixed with a little bit of a surfer vibe. This collection kind of came about with the idea of kind of a non-placeable paradise. Um, the collection is called Pale Hyperborea, which is kind of a mythical place in Greek mythology where it, the sun kind of constantly shines and will live forever. Backstage at Anna Sui, modern free raphaelites with a little psychedelic touch, blush on the eyes um, and blush on the cheeks and on the lips and then beautiful blue eyelids on the like, for the girls. What I decided to do is to wave the hair kind of loose and kind of bohemian and just sort of let it limply hang there as though, I mean, you could probably accomplish it with a braid, like three braids or four braids, and then sleep on it and then, you know, comb it through with a big comb. Um, or otherwise you can get the, the curling iron that we've gotten, which is the three barrel iron, and gradually go down the hair. And then at the end, we're just gonna run a big comb through it so it just floats as they walk. I was really inspired by the Pre-Raphaelite painters. Um, you know, there was a huge exhibit at the Tate uh, last year and I was just floored by it. So I thought, why not use this as the inspiration? They're my favorite paintings and I've never really touched on that. Um, so I filled my inspiration boards with those paintings and really tried to capture the color, tried, tried to capture the romanticism that they were capturing because they were so enamored of King Arthur and all those myths and um, tales. And so I wanted the girls to look like princesses. I also wanted to mix in kind of a rock star vibe to it. Um, so I love the fact that Jimmy Page owns like those beautiful tapestries that were, was my favorite thing in that Tate show. So there's a little Jimmy Page in there. There's, uh, there's um, you know, the velvet pants and the embroidered jackets. I kind of like that whole period of psychedelia. Uh, the Cream, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. Um, and I try to capture that in the music. Show. It's a really fun collection. This one's a, uh, it's very hippie, it's very kind of Marrakeshi vibe to it. Soundtrack's always nice. Great tons of dresses that I wear today in the sweltering heat right now. Um, but it was very muted actually, but I really liked it. It was very pretty, very, very pretty and sweet and a lot of wearable little summer dresses in there. Yeah, for sure.
fashion. You can sign me up for all of it. Yeah, I loved it. I love anything Art Nouveau and ethereal. Flowers in the hair, I loved it all. Yes, it, she, Anna always is right up my alley and is so uniquely herself and I just love it. I'm such a fan. Anna's collections are always fun, they're always alive. She's very true to herself. Um, the dresses were beautiful, all the fringing. So much for real girls to wear. That's what I always love about Anna, you can wear it, you know? And, and just, just, I don't know, it just reminds me of happy days always. Like really optimistic and oh, I love Anna. She's a very good friend of mine too. You know, I always love Anna's shows, and you notice, it's, you know, the loyalty at her shows is the first thing that strikes you. You know, it's so, season after season, so many of the new people, and then along come, I mean, so many of the same faces, but in a great way, in the loyal way. And then there's always new faces, of course, but there's nobody who does that particular turn of the century into the 1920s, 1930s, like her. And then she completely makes it contemporary, and there's just something about her that's just totally got an Anna Sweet feeling. She rarely strays from that. She knows her voice, she knows what she likes, she knows her customer, and she's a really great designer and a really unique one. Well, I love fashion, and I think that all these people that say that fashion's finished or that, you know, like they, that they, fashion's frivolous. I mean, we all love dressing up. We all, like, who doesn't like to dress up in a fantasy? And so I, I try to capture that every season. And, and you know, it's, it's what makes me happy. And I think you can see it makes the models happy too. I think they were so happy to wear the clothes. It's very unstructured, it's very raw, it's actually a 10 minute hairdo. Sprayed ocean spritz in the roots of the hair till it was really wet and then literally we just blasted it with a hair dryer just to create this kind of crazy broken sexy feline texture and literally we just pulled it back, put it in a ponytail and then tied the ponytail into a knot. A one hairpin, bang, kind of love the imperfection of it. It's not too romantic but it's very pretty at the same time. The rawness work with the hair, but when it comes to the makeup, you don't want to look raw, you want to look fresh. I'm using a palette of dusty pink colors, powder one for the contour, to create a contour, a creamy one on the apple to create the freshness, and the creamy one will capture the light. And for the lips, it's going to be dusty pink gloss that I'm dabbing just to create a little bit of color, but more of a texture, you know, to be very moist. I started off collection thinking about how a woman builds her wardrobe and iconic pieces like the sweatshirt and the pea coat and the motorcycle jacket, sort of wardrobe staples. And I tried to infuse these pieces with what I like to think of as a downtown below 14th Street ease mixed with a little bit of a surfer vibe. I'm 
a beach bum at heart, so I always love being on the beach. And I think, especially coming off summer, just to have that sense of escapism for a little bit longer. I love print and pattern, and that's really one of my signatures. So I have florals, they're a bit more graphic and really crisp. And then I have this print called the breaker print, which is really like waves. And then I added in also a multi-stripe, a cabana stripe. So I really kept the prints graphic, you know, a little bit stronger, but then I balanced them by making them in sort of classic pieces like a tuxedo jacket or a, a pea coat. Mixing it with masculine and feminine elements, menswear elements mixed with feminine fabrics. It's, for me, it's really about the mix. by kind of a downtown surfer girl look. And I think he did a good job. I mean, surfing is such a perennial, you know, look for fashion, especially for spring collections. But I really liked how he put his own twist on it and kind of an edge with the midriff tops and the unfinished hems on some of the tweeds and also the flat pointy shoes. It was kind of a masculine, feminine spin on it. And I really liked it. His graphics are always amazing. He has such a good color sense, but I also really liked how he played with textures. He had some lacquered eyelets, which were very cool. I like this dress. It's very like sophisticated, but also really fun and young at the same time, and I really like that about his clothes. When you walk in wearing something that is Peter Som, you know, you turn heads because of his understanding of how to play with pattern and embellishment and twist it all up and make something so glamorous. He really understands a woman's body, so he can cut a mean dress for a woman with curves, but he also has this kind of youthful exuberance to his clothes that make them very girly and fun to wear for the younger tribe. So as a designer, he has great reach. I have so many friends who I've known for a very long time as young women and now they're mothers and they're having young families and you're seeing how their lifestyle changes and that's how one of the pieces evolved. I call it the drop-off pant. It's like a yoga pant but I did it in neoprene and added some seaming and some details. So this collection was really based in reality. Sometimes reality is kind of the most exciting inspiration of all. It's really exciting to partner with Kohl's. It's part of their Design Nation program, and yeah, I'm inspired by St. Bart, so that's the inspiration. Again, more of the beach. 
and to be able to bring my collection and my aesthetic to a, a, a wide audience at an amazing price point is, is really so thrilling for me. So the hair we create for Creature of the Wind is like a surfing version of Hollywood uh, Catherine Hepburn. We're doing a low parting, we use the mousse, we curl the hair just to create a wave, we pack the hair in the back with a very low piece of hair, like to pretend we have a barret, and in the front we have the hair flat and we have a wave coming on the side. So the Look for Creatures of the Wind, uh, Spring, Summer 2014, it's, it's a little bit of a reference to um, the 40s and 50s. I think what Shane and Chris do that's always interesting is really create these opposing forces of uh, textures and contrast, so we wanted the makeup to do the same. So it's really subtle, it's a, it's a vibrant lip, it's a very vibrant orange satin textured lip and then a very soft opalescent green eye with no liner, no mascara, uh, no brows. We thought that when it had those hard literal references to the era it seemed too retro and not modern. Um, and I think it's just a you know really beautiful, dreamy, ethereal, romantic look. <laughs> kind of came about with the idea of kind of a non-placeable paradise. Um, the collection is called Hail Hyperborea, which is kind of a mythical place in Greek mythology where it, the sun kind of constantly shines and will live forever. And so it's this idea of it's kind of trying to sort of create an idea of what that paradise might be. For and we're also looking at um, the work of an artist named Eugene von Brunchenheim and looking at um, especially these photographs that he took of his wife in these um, kind of really like these like, vignettes of like this kind of like tropical paradise but in a really naive way um, and kind of like the the emotion and the feeling that was in those photographs um, somehow we found a really nice connection to the idea of hyperborea and this kind of paradise that he was creating um, for for these photographs Looking at um, uh, Eugene von Brunchenheim's work, a lot of the colors that he worked with kind of informed the early development of the color story. And um, yeah, it was about just kind of about like a mix of materials and a mix of colors that somehow um, felt like that idea to us. I mean, it's always kind of a more personal interpretation and never meant to be um, so direct or so literal. So. Um, I think it's sometimes hard to point out a piece and say that this is the manifestation of this idea. It's more about um, the idea that we kind of work from in the beginning and you know it, it changes a lot by the time it gets to the end. You know, what you have at Z isn't necessarily what you started with at point A. Probably our kind of lightest and most optimistic collection so and most far. Most fluid and probably sexiest. <laughs> like we've never, I don't think we've ever shown this much skin before. Let's wait and see. I thought this was such a beautiful, quintessentially spring show. The colors were great. They were kind of pale blues and white and pinks and reds, but there was sort of this distinct. 50s-ish vibe to the show. It was a little bit like a little greaser-ish, kind of the cool side of the 50s. 
with a great kind of fuller skirts below the knee and that boxy jacket. So, and I felt like there were a lot of really special pieces in this show. Like it, whether you like the look put together, if you take that jacket and put it with a pair of jeans, you're gonna wear it forever. Or that skirt with just a white blouse. So I think there's, this is gonna be a really commercially successful collection. I think that the girl that wears Creatures of the Wind is, she's definitely cool and a, kind of a little bit downtown, but she's not edgy. She's actually, she likes color. She doesn't feel like she always has to wear black. She doesn't feel like she needs to wear a lot of leather. She's cool in a feminine way. I feel like this show is sort of a culmination of all the things that they do well, but sort of very balanced, like the handcraft and the kind of interesting color combination. But they have this sort of casual, very retro, but eccentric way of working. And, you know, they're developing. And, you know, they're developing at a slow, measured pace, very strongly. I think, I mean, for us, the one thing that has been helpful to our growth is just doing what we really feel like doing. Yeah, I mean, I think as a young collection, it's really important to not be pigeonholed. And I think, you know, we have a lot of ideas we want to explore and a lot of directions that we'd like to kind of pursue. So um, we allow ourselves the freedom to kind of do what we want to do. And I think, um, you know, if you're true to that, it always looks like you. So. And normally the things that we think are the riskiest are the things that for some reason do the best. So. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt to be a little bit more out there with those sorts of things. There was a lot of décolleté for Creatures of the Wind, for sure. Uh, and I thought that the last dress in that sort of papery nylon with the bustier cinched around the torso, um, I didn't think it was sexy necessarily, but it was very, uh, it was very seductive, I think. It, that was definitely my favorite piece in the, in the show. The show is really the only moment where you see all of the components come together. I mean, the music we've been thinking about for a long time, the clothes we've been developing, obviously, for six months. Um, but, you know, you don't see everything together until this day. So every component, you know, hair, makeup, music, lighting, um, it's all part of the, you know, these all kind of come together to form the end product. So every component is really important.